I hope you're ready today to completely change the way you think about posture for the better. All of these postures have one main thing in common, and it's very important, if not the most important thing. They're all trying to keep an even center of mass down the midline of the body. No matter what your spine curves look like, they look like that for a reason. They're trying to organize themselves so you can best stay upright and remain upright against gravity relative to the conditions your body is currently in. See, our body is very concerned with conserving energy and being as efficient as possible through movement and posture. This is how we evolved. We want to spend the least amount of calories or energy for the most amount of outcome that's potentially available to us. Who is more likely to have better posture, a 13-year-old or an 80-year-old? Probably the 13-year-old, assuming they don't spend 15 hours a day on their phone, because this person hasn't had as much time under gravity and they haven't had as much time to organize their spine curves and lose range of motion as they get older and therefore have to change the way that they move. As we get older, we tend to accumulate injuries and aches and pains. We tend to become a little bit more sedentary and we also tend to start training or exercising one particular way for an extended period of time. The resultant outcome of this and many other different things is that we tend to lose movement. And as we tend to lose movement options and range of motion available to us, we tend to start to need to compensate to find those things. And a lot of the times if we can't do that, we're going to end up trying to create a strategy to push ourselves forward. That might be and commonly is someone that ends up with a forward center of mass in an anterior pelvic tilt. I talk about this a lot and I like it because it's an easy example to understand. Initially, when we do go forward into an anterior pelvic tilt, you can see how our center of mass would be displaced more forward. But our body might not like that over time. It might say, hey, I'm falling too far forward. So what I need to do is I need to bring something back in order for me to not fall flat on my face. And that might be your thoracic spine. Now you end up in a situation where you have a more even spine curve relative to where your center of mass was and you feel more safe under gravity and more balanced, so to speak. Or let's say you're someone who has more of a flat back or more of a posterior pelvic tilt. Well, this can lead to a situation where you feel like your center mass is too far back, so something then has to come forward. And a lot of the times that's going to be someone's head shoving forward into a forward head posture. And again, you become more balanced, but now you can have some issues associated with this forward head posture and also posterior tilt of your pelvis. Let's take a more asymmetrical perspective. Every human is asymmetrical to a certain extent, but let's say I have an injury to my left knee and I don't wanna wait there on my left side as much. So I might shift over to my right side more and hike up my right hip. But if my right shoulder comes up with me, then I might be in a situation where I'm falling too far to the right side. So I need to even myself out and I'm gonna probably drop my right shoulder so that way I can side bend my head to the left and now I have more of an even center of mass down the midline of my body. Now I cannot stress enough that there are so many different reasons why someone might present with a forward pelvis, a backward pelvis, someone shifted from side to side. It could do with how someone breathes, which is a big one. It could be injury history. It could be genetics. There are just so many different things, but the remaining principle, the underlying principle is still the same. It is about controlling your center of mass. Therefore, stretching or trying to activate or deactivate certain muscles to help improve our posture starts to make less and less sense once we understand the true underlying cause is the fact that someone cannot get their head stacked over their rib cage, stacked over their pelvis and their midfoot in a neutral posture. If I have rounded forward shoulders and a forward head, is stretching my pecs or activating my back muscles going to help educate my body how to stack these things together? Probably not. You might get some temporary relief, but the reason why a lot of people aren't seeing the long-term results they're looking for is because they're not trying to address the right thing. They're addressing the symptom, which might be these rounded forward shoulders, but not the reason why they're rounded forward in the first place. What's cool is we don't have to use just visual posture to determine if what we're doing is working. I like to use objective assessments. Here's someone that was presenting like they were shifted over on the right side of their body, as I mentioned earlier. Now their center of mass was such that they were extended on both sides of their body, flared rib cage on both sides, 
and they were shifted right. So this person has a lot of work to do in order to get their center of mass better into a more stacked position. Now what we did is we put her in a custom orthotic, something that was designed to help her even her center of mass out. Because if we can restore center mass at the foot, a lot of the times things up the chain take care of themselves. Now this person had a higher foot arch on the right side, because if you were to lean to the right side, your right foot arch would naturally become higher than your left. So what we did was we gave her orthotics that allowed her to bring her right side down and also shift her center of mass back. And this was the resulting outcome. Range of motion throughout her entire body improved instantaneously. And you could see her posture improved. Now, orthotics are not going to fix everything immediately. I'm just trying to demonstrate to you that you can see some pretty impressive things happen when you address the root cause of the issue. She still needs to do drills to help her stack better and do that without the orthotics. But the orthotics will be a nice intermediary to get her to do that and hold on to those adaptations we're trying to get with the drills. But by doing something that restores our pelvis to more of a neutral position where it's stacked underneath us better, that should open up movement for range of motion. That should be a natural consequence of what happens because people have the range of motion to do a lot of these things and express that on a table test. It's just that their posture is limiting them from accessing that because their pelvis or rib cage or head is stuck in a position that doesn't allow them to express that range of motion. So by getting them in a better position, things tend to unlock automatically. Let me give you an example of this. Now, in order to be successful in this, we need to be able to find two points of contact on the back side of our pelvis called our PSIS, posterior superior iliac spine. Now, everyone has these and they are the highest point of the back side of the pelvis. So, if I find Trevor's spine here, I trace it down and I move off to the side. Everyone has this little bony protrusion on the back side right here, and they have them on both sides. So Trevor needs to find both of these points of contact easily and hold on to them throughout the duration of this entire set. So Trevor, you can go ahead and lay on your back again. Now, the way you'll find them most easily is to play around with your feet. Slide them a little further away, slide them a little closer. Don't get them too close to your butt, but play around with somewhere in this mid-range right here and find where you can most easily passively feel those two points of contact on the backside of your pelvis against the ground. All right, so let's say for Trevor, it's right about there for you. All right, we have a ball in between Trevor's knees that allows his knees to stay in line with his feet and also his hips. So this object isn't so wide, it's pushing his knees out excessively and it's not so small, his knees are collapsing in. It's just sort of a placeholder for now. Okay, now the rest of it is honestly pretty easy. All we're going to do is we're going to feel the inner arches of our feet. So on Trevor's foot right here, that's gonna be right here, this first metatarsal head and this inner heel. Not the big toe, but right here. That doesn't mean he loses the outside edge of his foot. That means he's just focusing on very gentle pressure into the ground with those, those two points of contact. It's really just about a two out of 10. And honestly, he shouldn't feel much engaged. He should just feel like his back flattens out a tiny, tiny bit and he feels those pressures in his feet securely. Okay, now he's gonna reach low with his elbows leading the show, right about there. So if this was 90 degrees, he's somewhere around that 60 degree range right there. And he's gonna breathe in through his nose silently and he's gonna sigh the air out. And he's gonna do that sigh for about five seconds. All right, let's summarize. Trevor's got those points of contact, those PSIs evenly on both sides, one or two out of 10. He's squeezing the ball one out of 10, two out of 10 max. So that way his glutes don't kick on. And he's also got those pressures in his foot, one or two out of 10, just sensing them on the ground, low reach, relaxed breathing. Now the biggest problem people are gonna run into in this exercise is they're gonna feel their glutes engage. That is a compensatory strategy to find a neutral pelvis position in the context of this exercise. So we need to make sure that we're not feeling any glutes. So if you are, again, play around with your foot position, see if you can find those PSIS. And if you still can't do it, squeeze the ball a little harder. You can get up to potentially a four or five out of 10, maybe even a six or a seven in really rare cases, but honestly, like try less initially and 
a lot of times when people are feeling their glutes, they're just trying to push their feet too hard into the ground or push their low back into the ground. So just relax and then try a little bit more of a squeeze. The other thing people are gonna run into is their head is gonna feel uncomfortable on the ground. They're gonna feel like they can't relax their neck. And if that's the case, take a very small rolled up hand towel, place it underneath your neck. And that way that should support your head and allow your chin to point up at the ceiling. It shouldn't be so thick that it's tipping your head back excessively. And it shouldn't be so small that your chin comes forward. It should allow that chin to be nice and supported, pointing straight up at the ceiling, and then do the exact same thing in the exercise. Now I'm giving you some general exercises that can give you some really great results right off of the bat. But if you want more of a comprehensive approach that starts you from the very beginning and progresses you all the way into upright exercises that address the underlying root cause of a lot of movement and postural issues, check out my beginner body restoration program. I will link it down below in the description. And here's how you can do that in more of an upright position. We're going to start with an object in between our knees that's a little bit compressible that allows our knees to stay in line with our toes. So it's not too large, shoving our knees out. It's not too small, making our knees collapse in. We're going to place it in between the mid part of our thigh there. Now, we're going to get one foot length away from the wall. So take one step, place your heel in line with your toes of that back leg, and now get a toe straight ahead hip width stance. Now we're gonna make sure that our head is stacked over our rib cage and our pelvis. So we want a lot of our back touching the wall with our head nice and relaxed, our gaze looking straight ahead. And then what we're going to do is feel the foot contacts of the inner heel and the first metatarsal head on both sides evenly. That doesn't mean we lose the outside foot and roll off of it. That just means that's where our focus is on both sides evenly, our bias is there. Now, Feeling on the wall, the most important contact of our low back is our PSIS. Those are those kind of bony spots at the back side of our pelvis. We'll put up an image to show you where that is. So Trevor's gonna be focusing on those foot contacts and on the wall, the PSIS evenly on both sides relative to what he's capable of doing. Now he's gonna place his hands on a chair, ideally something that he can kind of roll or push and he's just gonna reach it away from him, not letting his sternum depress. So he's gonna stay, again, nice and tall and stacked. So he's just gonna reach that slightly away. That's gonna give him some protraction of the shoulder. His shoulder blade is gonna move away from his spine, but he's gonna remain tall. Now all he's gonna do is breathe in through his nose, silently, out through his mouth, sighing the air out. For about five to eight seconds of an exhale. At the end of that exhale, he might feel a little side abs engaged. Not six pack abs, but side abs. He's going to maintain a slight contraction in those side abs as he silently, super slowly inhales through his nose. And that's going to give him some nice opening of the backside of his rib cage. And he should feel some expansion back there. All the while, remember, don't lose that PSIS on the wall on either side. Don't lose those foot contacts on either side. The biggest thing to watch out for here is people have the tendency to clench their lower glutes. We do not want that to happen. We are trying to stay as relaxed as possible. So please check in with yourself and ask, are my glutes relaxed? And if not, then what you can do is give that ball a little squeeze, maybe a three or four out of 10, not much more than that, before you try to find your PSIS contact and those foot contacts. So squeeze, then go, and that should make it easier for you to keep your glutes relaxed. The biggest mistake we see here is when people inhale, because we're trying to get expansion in the back, people have a tendency to stand up as they inhale because their ribs tend to be so flared in this like static posture that they have. We need the ribs to stay down. So maintain that reach. If not, reach just a tiny bit more as you inhale, that'll give you nice expansion of your back. But conversely, don't overreach. So if you overreach, you're gonna depress your sternum and then you're gonna become really rounded and your head's gonna jet forward. Try not to do that. Try to make sure that you maintain that position you got with the PSIS contact and the foot contacts. Really, all you need to do is just maintain a slight reach with some protraction throughout the entire set and you're gonna be doing things right.